everyone, this week I thought I'd give you a little bit of a lowdown on the ins and outs of van life in France. Waiting for a car to pass. <laughs> for anyone new around here, I'm Kiki. I've been living on the road for over three years now, and I'm usually based in Scotland, but I couldn't cope with the idea of another Scottish winter, so I'm currently roaming around France. <laughs> I had a minor collision last week with a big darty work van and it completely smashed my wing mirror to pieces. It was my passenger side wing mirror because we were driving opposite sides of the road and you can't drive without one of them in France when you're driving a UK, is it right hand drive? I don't know my right and left but <laughs> you just can't manage that one. I literally pulled over straight after it happened in a bit of a panic. Couldn't actually pull out from where I was because I couldn't see if anything was coming. It hadn't even crossed my mind. <laughs> Luckily I ran back down the road and scooped up all the big pieces and managed to like tape it all back together until I got to a garage um, who could get me a new one. It's one of those things that afterwards I think maybe I should have filmed when that happened and filmed the broken mirror and things but honestly I was just too stressed and emotional about the whole thing to even think about filming it uh, until like the next day after I'd got the new mirror put on and uh, slightly broken my bank balance in the process. The body coloured bit that's like clips onto the outside of the mirror wasn't even covered in that insane price. Uh, it fitted back on luckily um, it was mostly intact. It's just got like a crack in the bottom of it. And maybe at some point, once I get back to the UK, I'll look at replacing that. Kind of depends on the cost. Okay, so I have my new wing mirror, which is really good. Uh, the guys at the garage were amazing. The women there that I saw yesterday, uh, I, I mean, I arrived <laughs> probably looking a complete state, certainly when I took my sunglasses off because I was kind of stressed, a little bit emotional. And um, they were absolutely lovely. The first one didn't speak English and uh, we were kind of getting by with me using Google Translate. And um, yeah, I, my French is pretty terrible. I can say some random things, but I can't have conversations and um, definitely not about broken wing mirrors. Like I was struggling to even pronounce wing mirror in French, which I'm not going to try and do on film now because it will be embarrassing for anyone that speaks French. <laughs> um, but yes, they were lovely. Uh, the woman that uh, just spoke French went and found a colleague who also spoke English and she was also lovely they were just really great and it really helps when you're having a bit of a hard time when people are lovely and helpful and it did help having someone speak a bit of English because it took some of the stress away um she was there when I went in today and um again just lovely they were guys were lovely there if I was local they would be my garage from now on it was Elena that was there today and uh, if she happens to be watching this because she was asking why I was filming the guy changing the mirror um, and wanted to check out my YouTube. So if you're watching this, thank you so much. It made a real difference having yeah, friendly, helpful people on a bad day. <laughs> Unfortunately, the excess on my insurance is actually even higher than the cost of replacing the wing mirror. So claiming on insurance isn't going to get me anywhere. There's no shortage of places to park overnight in France. There are some limitations where you can drive and park camping cars, which is what they call motorhomes over here. It's mostly in places that just aren't big enough to accommodate large motorhomes, like parking on the side of the road next to beaches, where they take up multiple car spaces or stick out in the road. This is where having a van is great. I can still park in these places during the day as a van and then use a camping car spot in an air overnight. The best of both worlds. If you're happy in towns, there's an air in most. Some you do have to pay, but many are free. Being out of season, I've not paid for overnight parking yet, and I've not struggled to find places. If you're more into being tucked out of the way in nature, there's also plenty of options. Though some are a little less suitable in the winter, as they get pretty muddy. So I used my mats for the first time since I've been away. Um, it was a little bit muddy getting into this spot. 
in the photos it looked like all of that was hard and in theory I think in the summer it is so I thought I'd park there but then it was just I thought I might get stuck so I managed to get back onto the grass and then use these just to make sure that I don't get stuck because it's been kind of wet okay Ooh. let's try that Muddy and bent. <laughs> uh, let's go around the back. Okay, that kind of worked. I'm assuming these are going to bend back into shape. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of places in France have airs in the towns and really easy races to fill up water and certainly always get rid of water if you've got grey water and stuff. A lot have toilet waste disposal places as well doesn't apply to me but really handy if you've got a bigger van you can find them with this sign to be able to get rid of water this one has got wastewater which you can park over but i don't need to because my tank comes out and then water fill up and there's also a toilet disposal down there at some places there is a charge for it there's a charge for uh, water fill up and things. I think waste water disposal is usually free um, and a lot of places water and stuff is free. I've been in France a month at the point of recording this and I've spent two euros on water so far and I've mostly just found the free places because I don't need a huge amount. If I was filling up a huge tank I might not mind spending a couple of euros but when you're just filling up a little tank it feels like a bit of a, a waste to get like 100 litres of water and not be able to use it and just yeah <laughs> but it's really handy to find these spots right around France they are honestly everywhere and the little camper van like emptying waste emptying sign you just see it when you enter pretty much every town so it's quite easy to find your way to the spots to get rid of stuff this place has uh, water that's not a drinking water here to rinse out like toilet stuff and things oh. But also really handy to rinse out my grey tank because it doesn't always get a rinse. I have two 16 litre water tanks in my van. Um, they last me a little while. If I'm doing loads of like cooking, washing and everything, uh, then I can get through them in about a week. But I can stretch that out a lot longer if I need to. Since being in France I have discovered that you need a hose to fill up with water in most places. It can be really awkward otherwise to get water tanks in. So I found this at a garden centre, a Gamver, and um, I've never had my own garden and stuff so I've never had my own hose. I've obviously used other people's but I was a bit puzzled by what was what. Um, I tried it at this water fill up point the other day and it did splurt water everywhere so I'm going to try it again. If it does that I'm just going to be using the end piece. I now have a soggy hose pipe dripping off the back of the van, but worth a try. Uh, let's try again. They almost always get wet when I fill up water tanks, so I'm just going to grab one of my spare towels and um, give the tank a bit of a dry before I put it away. And then the key thing is not to leave this bit behind. <laughs> Wait a minute, which way is undo? Uh oh. So this is kind of cool. I just paid two euros here. Uh, press the button, otherwise it doesn't work. And then get water. You get five minutes of water or 15 minutes of electricity if you've got hookup. Uh, I didn't actually need that amount of water, but I was happily using the Wi-Fi and staying here for a couple of days. So I figured let's pay two euros. Look, there's my van. And some water.
It's not been a struggle finding public toilets in most places, though there's definitely been a few that have been closed for the winter. For the most part, it's easy enough. There's no guarantees on the cleanliness of them, just like public toilets anywhere in the world. There's also still a few squat toilets scattered around. Always have some toilet paper or tissues tucked in a pocket, because a lot of public toilets don't have any, even if they look like they should. This is still my preferred method when I'm out in the woods. I'm in need of the shower. It might not look appealing, but when it's the first shower you've had in a week, it's getting a bit like... Okay, it's not quite a week. Five days? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't have many showers in my first couple of weeks in France. I've done a little better at finding them since. I found Wanderer map online which shows some showers, but I'm pretty sure it misses a lot as I've already found a few that aren't on there. It seems that the total energy services on highways have showers, at least the ones I've checked out that have a shop, cafe, toilets and things. Sometimes there's a charge, but they mostly appear to be free. It cost me two euros at one near Rennes, but there's no time limit, so I think it's a fair price. I've certainly paid more for a shower. Like at services in the UK, sometimes you have to hand over your key to get the key to the shower. You get it back once you're finished. It's really easy to find bins. I keep a small one in the van and just chuck it every couple of days so it's never a huge bag that won't fit in a public bin. Recycling has taken a bit more figuring out. A few years ago France made what you can recycle more uniform across the country, so once you learn what can be recycled at least it can all go in. You do find separate bins for different things in some places, and it really varies per region. In some you can stumble across multiple in a day, and in others you only find glass recycling bins. Sometimes supermarkets have recycling sections, which is super useful. The bin truck has turned up, and I'm quite relieved because I did fill one of those bins with stuff from the sea yesterday. I'm sure you all already know this, but if you're popping outside to relieve yourself, please don't leave a trace. Toilet paper, tissues, and especially wet wipes take ages to break down. Look horrible, and mean that campers get banned from places. Just pop it in a bin. It's super easy to find laundrettes in France. I like to use self-service ones so I can just do my own thing. There's outside ones like I used back in Scotland and lots in small buildings. Honestly, you just stumble across them when you don't even need one. I found them cheaper than in the UK, sometimes quite considerably. It is laundry day again. Luckily, these ones have a reasonable just explanation. And then some big dryers. It's not the cheapest place I've found, but six euros for a small wash. Should be okay. You really need to know your vehicle height in France. Not only is there a height barrier on lots of car parks, but sometimes you find them in the middle of cities. I've never really struggled with driving in Europe, except at junctions in towns and cities where it can be a bit confusing where to go. But I get confused at junctions I don't know in the UK too. France has a priority à droite rule, which applies somewhat intermittently and therefore is a little confusing. If you're in a town and reach what looks like crossroads with no road markings, then it definitely applies. So keep an eye out for cars approaching from the right in built-up areas. Sometimes they have priority, unless there's a stop or give way sign on their side. It's caught me out once or twice as it's just never something you need to look out for in the UK. The speed limit changes when you enter a built-up area, but they don't always tell you that. There's generally a reminder sign just down the road, but if you see a rectangular sign entering towns or villages, you're in a 50 unless it tells you otherwise. I use Google Maps to navigate, but it's tried to take me the wrong way down a couple of one-way streets and doesn't always get the speed limit right, so I wouldn't rely on it entirely. On this day, it thought I could get through something that I'm not sure is possible even when it's not flooded. Thankfully, I have plenty of reversing practice from small Scottish roads and a short van that's easy to turn. Sometimes you need to watch out for farmers blocking the road when they're protesting. I don't think anyone is going to be worried about food in France. I mostly cook for myself, so I shop at Lidl and supermarkets like I do at home, but I try to pick up things at a local bakery when I'm in towns or villages, so I give some money to a local business. The prices aren't usually very different to the supermarkets. If you're veggie or vegan, it is so much easier in France now than when I was a kid, or even 10 years ago. There's options in shops, probably more options in restaurants, I don't eat out enough to confirm this, and people actually know what vegetarians and vegans are. <laughs> 
France has great markets in most towns that are definitely worth checking out. A few of my favourite foods you can get in France, but not in the UK. Le petit beignet. Uh, this bag came with three. I'm down to my last one. That's so tasty.